Good morning. Good morning. John, John Morgan with Cassidy. Here today to talk to you about some Codex Data Man readers. A little background about Cassidy. We've been in business for about 35 years doing industrial vision and other industrial automation. Codex has been in business 35 years doing industrial vision and they have just put the one million unit in the field. We're going to talk today about their latest series of readers, which is the 260 series. Now, I understand you don't have a specific project today, so we're talking to you about a lab kit that costs about $1,000. Is there somebody else we need to bring in to talk about a lab kit or something like that? No, that'd be me. Okay, all right, very well. The thing that Codnex prides themselves on is their algorithms. They have the best-in-class 1D and 2D algorithms for their vision-based readers. The 1D algorithm they use is called power, uh, hot bars, and that lets, that lets us process 1D codes that aren't pristine. When you first print a 1D code, you got real high contrast, black and white, and everything like that. And as it goes through your system, it'll get marked and scuffed and dirty and all that. Now we may have a black coat on a gray background or gray on gray, that kind of thing. A lot of readers will struggle with that, but Codex's algorithms let them process and read that code very quickly. On the 2D side, and this is what we're going to do today in the demo, they have Power Grid. Power Grid lets them read 2D codes that other cameras can't even find or other readers can't even find, let alone read. And I'm going to show you that in a little bit. <clears throat> Another thing that we, that Cassie and Codnex both find ourselves on is, is support. As I said, we have, we have a lot of, both have a lot of experience in the industry. Right. We have me for support. You're always more than welcome to call me. I'll help you any way I can. We have Rusty Simpson on staff, who's our protection engineer. Been dealing with industrial vision for about 25 years. A lot of background with Codnex as well. Codnex has their online support also. They have Dallas Dillon out of Kansas City, who is very easy to get a hold of, whether it be phone calls, texts, emails, whatever. He's really good about getting back with us. And they also have toll-free tech support we can call into if we, if we have really detailed questions. That platform that Codnex built this, this reader on is an extremely flexible pla platform, uh, platform also. You can see there the reader I have is nice and straight. The one I have right here is the same series reader, but in a 90-degree configuration. They're out, they all come to you straight, but you, in the field you can take these covers off, move a couple of nuts, turn, it, turn the body over, put it back together, and you have a 90-degree configuration. Okay? Also notice that the light and lens on this is a lot shorter and looks totally different than the front of that one. Same reader, just with different lights and lenses, because again, we have a very flexible platform. This is meant for real close-up applications, like say one to eight inches. That one's more like four to 40 inches, okay? Mm -hmm. All right? That same platform is so flexible that they built the latest vision sensor also. <coughs> same, <clears throat> same hardware. Again, we take it apart, we can make a 90 degree configuration, but Different light and different, I mean, different lighting for the different applications we have. We also have multiple, multiple uh, lensing options for this as well. We'll pass these around. Let's look at them. They feel the body. Yeah. Both of them are all metal. Sure, yeah. yeah, all metal. IP65 rated. All metal construction. Very sturdy. Very, very tough, tough devices. All right. So now let's let's work on the reader a little bit and show what we actually do here. I'm going to connect to my reader. And this software that we're going to see is the same software that Codnex uses for all of our fixed mount readers. What's the price of your software? It's free. We can download it from the website. And okay. lifetime updates, that kind of thing, it is free, readily available. All right. I'm going to click on the live button over here. We're going to kind of work our way on this one screen down from on the left side, top to bottom. Now, right off the bat, when I clicked on live, came in and started reading this. But I want to, I want to dirty this up. I want to show you probably which was, you know, because we're not going to get that luck out in the field. So there's a dirty image, right? We can't see anything, reader's not reading, anything like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the next button down and click tune. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna optimize my focus and my lighting for this application. Is that the same that's on here as tune? Yes, yes, it is. Okay. Same button's on there. I'm just gonna use the ones in the software today. Okay. That's the exact same button, that's right. All right, so now, as it goes through, we're gonna see it come in and out of focus. The circle's giving us feedback, showing us the green circle shows that it's focused. And then once it gets focused, it's going to start changing the light banks. The light banks are represented in the bottom left-hand corner of the software over here. Mm -hmm. The top two are polarized, the bottom two are not. And it'll start turning the different lights on and off until it finds a lighting situation that it, it thinks is the best. And that's the one it's going to give us. Now, over on the software, we have its decoding threshold line. Anything below that is attempts that did not read. Above that are attempts that did read. Now, if you notice, we have a group up here that are real close together and real high scores. They obviously read, and one of those is the one it picked for the optimal configuration. However, we got some other outliers here that read, showing that it can read when it, even when it's not perfectly focused or not the perfect lighting. Because we all know every time the code comes by, it may not be in the exact same place every time. 
may have a little different lighting and that kind of thing as the day, as the day goes on. So we can read under, under less optimal conditions as well. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the test. And what, all that's going to do is put the camera in the mode where it's going to give me a trigger about once a second. And I'm going to show you this algorithm I was talking to you about a while ago. So now, test. I'm reading this good code right here. The good code has all the, all the things we expect to see in the code. Along the bottom and the left, we have, we have a solid line on each side, and that's called the binder pattern. That shows the reader where the code is and how big it is. Along the top and the right, we have alternating dark and black squares, or light, sorry, light and black squares. Those show the reader how big the information is in that pattern. Okay? Now, <clears throat> next to the code, we should have what's called a quiet zone, which means that nothing around the code is interfering with our code. Well, on my, on my card here, and by the way, on this card, I have five different codes. I have a good code and four different problems, and that's what I'm going to show you to go through here, different problems. And I'm going to leave this card with you. Yeah, I'll leave it. So, now we're looking at quiet zone violation. I don't have a quiet zone, still reading the code. If I go to the next one up here, I'm going to see that I have, I have a finder pattern damage, when actually I don't even have a finder pattern. I don't have the solid lines on the left and the bottom, I'm right. still reading the code. The next code, I have clocking pattern damage. I don't have a clocking pattern on top and right, and I'm still reading the code. And of course, if we go through and we take them all out, and we'll cover up the other ones here. I have no finer pattern, I have no clocking pattern. I really can't even have a quiet zone, I don't have an edge of the code, and I'm still reading that code. It's power grid is able to work from the inside out to read the code. That's a very, very powerful algorithm. They really are really good at what they do, and this is this is what they do. So Okay, so we talked about the lab kit demo for a second. And what I have, I have that reader with that lighting option, and this is called our image max option. I also have the reader with the same reader with uh, other lensing and lighting options as well. I have all the cables and everything you need to set up in your lab, and it, it's about a thousand dollars. That's the, that's a special way right now. I'm trying to get this reader in your hands right. and, let, and let your lab play with it and understand why it's so powerful, so flexible. Now. That reader normally retails for around four thousand dollars because that is our top of the line reader. But you can disable some of the tools in there to simulate having a less expensive reader, so you don't always have to buy the best reader because it's not always necessary. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? No, not at the moment. All right. Thank you.